Hey again guys and welcome to another YouTube lesson. Today we're looking again at operations and big subtopic of operations is processes. And we're looking at the syllabus dot point outputs. We've looked at inputs, what goes into making the good or and service. And we've also taken a look at the um, transformation process, the four V's, technology, quality, and so on. And we're looking at that final product that comes out, which is outputs. Now, as always, I don't like to rubbish the syllabus, but there are some faults in it, um, probably more than should be. When you look at outputs, there's two, one, two, types of outputs the syllabus wants you to understand. But in reality, if there was only two, then no one would buy the product. The third output, which is not written in the syllabus, is the product itself. The two that they show for outputs are customer service, very important output, and secondly, warranties. All right, we'll get into what those are. But also for an essay, I definitely want you to talk about those two, but you must also get in and talk about the actual product, the good and or service, and generally even with manufactured items, service is still part of that. Okay, that there is also an output. All right, so outputs are the final product or service that a business offers to their customers. Generally outputs are sent to the retail sector to be sold to the consumer. However, there are times when an output of one business can therefore be an input to another. I'll give an example of that. So the output from one business doesn't come to me, the consumer. I, I bought this fancy laptop, okay? But it goes to another business before it's on sold in a different package to the consumer. So an example, cotton fiber produced by a cotton farmer will be an input for a clothing manufacturer. These fine cotton threads that you see here. I'm not going to purchase cotton generally, unless it's to maybe, I don't know, cotton thread to sew a button on or something. Um, I will purchase the shirt that's been made and the manufacturer will buy the cotton from a farmer. So most of the time, those inputs, the product, go to the consumer, but sometimes they're required in the creation of an additional product. Now, outputs can be either a service or a good or both. Service, a doctor, a good, a computer, a ring, shirts, so on. A restaurant would be both. You provide the service through the waiters and waitresses and you have the food as the actual product. And even the selling of a good has some level of customer service as well. Now, it's important we understand this notion of lead time, lead time. It refers to the time it takes from receiving your initial order, the time it takes to generate and provide the final product to the consumer. And some things require very short lead time. Think about an old man, maybe receding hairline with glasses who has a heart attack because their students are always mean to him. I want to have short lead time in terms of visiting the hospital and having treatment. However, if I'm getting a new set of glasses or something, and I already have my initial ones, if it takes a while for me to get that delivery, it's not the end of the world. So depending on the product that you need, the lead time can be one of the key things that you need, or you'd rather wait a bit of time and the cost to be cheaper. All right, aside from the final product being the final good or service, two other very important outputs include customer service it's from the syllabus and warranties, again from the syllabus. That's what I was saying before. I want you to also mention the actual product as an output as well. Now, customer service refers to the level of attention given to individual customers when they make contact with a business and always very important to have good sound definitions. Look at a few of the different textbooks. See which one you can best recall and makes best sense to you. But also for good kids, 
looks the most um, sophisticated response and make sure that's enshrined in your brain, etched in there, rote learn that crap, as I say, and uh, use that in your short answers, your essays. It's a good definition there for customer service. Now, it's an intangible, you can't touch it. It's an intangible output that requires extensive contact with customers. Not surprising, it's called customer service. Uh, it's labor intensive and immediately consumed. Now, as an output, it's very difficult to measure customer service. And there's mystery shoppers and things, but it is hard to ascertain whether the customer service has been provided well or not. When a business cannot achieve a competitive advantage with a better product, so you might have a better computer or whatever, it can differentiate itself, distinguish itself um, through better customer service. And many businesses do that. They might be selling the exact same thing. They can't make it much cheaper. All right. They can't tweak the product that much, but it's awesome customer service. People will pay a premium for that. The customer service is provided to customers before, during, and after purchasing a product, if it's good customer service. Often I buy a lot of crap on the internet because it's cheaper. Uh, the customer service is poor before, during, and especially after. All right, But the cost is often cheaper because of it. Customer service is a particular output of service-based businesses. However, all manufacturing businesses must realize they also provide services. Even if you're a manufacturing business, you also need to provide decent customer service. It's very expensive to market heavily to attract new customers. I want you to keep that in mind. To get new customers requires a huge marketing budget from this interdependence. All right, there's a saying. It said that it costs 90% of a marketing budget to attract new customers whereas only 10% of your marketing budget needs to be kept to keep existing customers. So you do the maths. You're better off keeping those you've got already. And customer service is king. It's a key to be able to do that, to keep those existing customers. Now, the next one, the next syllabus dot point on outputs is warranties. A warranty is an assurance that a business stands by the quality claims of their products they make and provide to the market. Now, if the good is defective within generally one year period, then a consumer is entitled to have it fixed free of charge if it's within that 12 month period or a refund in exchange of the product or store credit. And that's under ACL Australian Consumer Laws. Warranties give the consumer confidence. There is a sound level of quality control throughout the entire operations process for a business and therefore they are of high importance to the consumer. So it ties in a little bit, I suppose, with that customer service too. Similarly, extended warranties give consumers even greater confidence in the operations process and what may result in some slight increases in cost. Having that extended warranty for the business result in greater sales volumes and therefore total revenue will be better by offering these extended warranties. Now, with a standard warranty, you need to understand the difference here. There's two, one, two types of warranties. They're express warranties or implied warranties. If I apply something, that means I'm suggesting, I'm not coming right out and saying it. I want you to think about express being the opposite. If you expressly state something, it's expressly written, it's there in print for you to see. On the flip side, implied, is more subtle. It's not there, but it's still equally valid. Express warranties, they're the ones you tend to see, those warranty cards. Well, express warranties have the terms written into the contract. And that's what you think of when you see a warranty. You don't know it's called an express warranty, but it is. Now, implied warranties aren't expressly written into the contract, into the warranty, but instead the law, the Australian law, states that these are minimum conditions that must be included whether you expressly stated or not, and they're automatically protected by the law. So if somebody says, a business says, oh, we didn't give you a warranty, well, they didn't even express warranty, true, but you have these implied benefits and conditions. 
right, to protect you. It doesn't have to be written there. An example of a legal protection under an implied warranty, that's the hidden one, the legal one, is that the good must be of merchantable quality. You might have heard that before, of merchantable quality. This means that it needs to be of reasonable quality for the consumer. All right, guys, thanks again for listening, and I'll see you next YouTube lesson.